Now that we've got the input set up, next we're going to want to create a widget blueprint that will display a radial menu. To do that, we're going to go into our blueprint folder, create a new widget blueprint, and name that demo widget. Now this could be your quick item select screen, it could be your emote wheel like um, you see in Fortnite and other games. Whatever you really need it to be, but this is how we would set it up. We're going to grab the, so we have the palette, typically this one's open. So we scroll down to the bottom, user created, expand that, grab the UMG radial menu. Now for widgets, you, to have the pivot be set to the center, we have to set the alignment to 0.5 by 0.5. And we're going to just set the anchor to the center of the screen and zero out its location. I'm going to scale it up a little bit just because it's nice. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll have the menu here. Now there's a few settings here and the documentation goes over each one of these and there's should be comments on most if not all of these. But an important one here is the auto rotate for up. That uh wasn't in there at first and then I realized that you know having it in the cardinal directions is really important because stick up is input up. Now if that's not important to you then you can just turn it off. It's on by default. And you can also kind of debug the number of pie pieces here. I don't have it where you can go down to zero and I have it maxed out at eight. I think you can set it to 16. Yeah. I wonder, I don't know. Yeah, it caps at 16 just because that gets so thin. There's probably, you, you could go in and add more. And I, I'm pretty sure that the, the, um, functions to add doesn't necessarily cap unless you tell it to, you know, allow resizing is going to let it pretty much be infinite. But it'll it'll look funky if you get past 16. So I put it at eight for for the drag, and you can force it to be 16. Enough rambling about that. Let's get to doing something with this. So let's uh, I like the menus to resize. It's just kind of cool, I think. So we'll set it to two and allow resizing. That way, if you only have two items, because it'll it'll always be resized correctly and then it'll resize this you get three four five six seven eight nine ten whatever and uh let's let's add some widgets real quick so on our construct since this isn't a game this is just an example let's create a widget let's actually let's take it one step further we're just going to have a custom event we're going to call it add icon. This will make it simpler to just quickly add a bunch of icons. As many as we want. And it needs to be a UMG basic radial icon. And we'll drag the icon image over to the node and this will be an input now. We're going to promote the settings to a variable. And we'll call that icon settings. Well, settings, not settings. And we're just going to set the owning player to get owning player. Now, I don't know if it's actually used, but as a good practice, this is how you should set up your widgets when you're um, working in Unreal because it just keeps things connected and nice. And if, if the child widget uses owning player and you're setting the owning player to this parent widget, it just keeps them all connected and it could be could be handy at some point even if it isn't now. Right here's the icon size. Don't think we need to mess with that, but we can. Next, we're going to take our radio menu. Let's let's rename it so it's got a nice name to it. We're going to call this selection wheel. Give a little bit of differentiation. All right, so now we have our selection wheel variable and we're going to add child to radio menu. That is the function and we should just have to connect it up like that. Right, there's a success and fail condition. If um, it'll it'll fail, if for some reason it can't add it, or 
you know, it can't add it because there's too many items. Now on construct, let's go add plus icon. And there's some icons in the asset. I'm going to hide engine content and plugin content. Just see what we've got in here. I think these are a lot of sample ones. Uh, T underscore, let's see. We're going to have a shotgun icon. We're going to have a... Oh, there's no pistol. Okay, revolver maybe. Yeah, revolver icon. And a third icon, which will be bamboo wall. You can really confuse your players with this menu. It's fun. All right, so now we have our widget, and it's going to add three icons to the wheel and then what it's not gonna be on the screen so we have to add that somewhere now I'm kind of lazy and I like to add stuff to the level blueprint but we can also add it to the player controller blueprint it, or you could add it to your player blueprint blueprint I'm a little bit torn as to where to put it here if we put it in the player controller that might be a good place to, to start so let's open up our player controller we made earlier and assign, and we're just gonna have really simple here. Um, input key alt. So this is left alt on the left alt down. Let's create a widget. What widget we're gonna make? We're gonna create that widget we just added, and it's what we would call it demo widget. There we go. And the only player is going to be this. See, uh, things connect. And so this will feed into there. Um, there is one thing we forgot to do, but and I'll, I'm just going to add this to viewport. You'll be able to figure out pretty quickly what's not working when we do this. So, oh, and we want to promote this to a variable real quick so we don't lose it. And this is going to be selection wheel. Just connect these up like this, make it clean. Clean blueprints are happy blueprints. And then on released, and I'm gonna just convert this to a validated get. There's a, there's a reason. Sometimes when you alt tab out of a screen, you lose focus, and some it's good to make sure there there is something here. And uh, another thing I'd normally do would be this. I'd Make sure there wasn't already a selection wheel. So we say it's not valid. And that would be just a little fail safe there because sometimes you can be holding down the key and actually hit tab, go to a new screen, and then you, you come back and the logic's broken. You've got two widgets on the screen if you hit it again. It doesn't always happen, but it can happen. And so left alt. I think that's I think it's gonna add our widget like we want, but let me press play. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Only does it once. Another thing to note. We need to set it to nothing. I like to create the widget every time I hit the button. If your widget's cheap, it won't matter. If your widget has like a ton of stuff going on, it could be a problem. So you could just cache the variables and forget this right here. And just, you know, if it's not valid, create. And if it is valid, just add to the screen. You know what? That's probably a smarter way of doing it. Let's try to keep this from getting too rambly, but that's a, that's this is one way you can do it. So yeah. All right, so our, we we're showing a menu, menu, and it's it's there, but there's no input. What could it be? We didn't set the input to update and updating the input is really important because you could have nested menus like I have in the build sample and how that works is one menu is being controlled and once a selection is made it just flips over the switch and it says hey update the other menu you don't want both menus to be updating at the same time so that is why it's set up like this and it does use an event tick but it's it's a justified one 
I know those are the the um, evil code things to use, and that's why you have to manually take the wheels. So it should just be update input. That should update all of the inputs, and what it'll do is it'll try to update the joystick. If there's no joystick, try to update with the mouse, because I'm not sure if there's even a way to detect if there is a mouse. So, but you can you can check for the joystick pretty easy. See if it's been moved. All right, so that's going to update the input on our selection wheel. Since we only have one wheel, we only need to update it all the time when the widgets are active. All right, so now when we hit Alt, you'll need to use your left stick. We didn't set that up. Also, our colors are broken. Those are good colors, white on white. But yeah, we have input. And our camera's still moving. You have to manually turn off your camera input because that's how that's how Unreal is, and we're not we're not doing anything here. Um, so yeah, that's that's our widget. But let's let's do one little thing before we quit. Let's go into our icon settings, all the way down here. And so when we set our highlight color, this is going to be real handy. Let's make it a nice. Pink or purple? Right there, that's kind of a nice in between. And the unhighlight color, make it a, let's just leave it white. It's fine. Also, there's an animation style. So there's two animations that grow and a shake. And there may be more in the future, but for now we've got two. So if we look at our, new, our menu now, it's got a little bit of a shake, kind of add some life to it. I think that's more cartoony, but uh, I guess the colors still <laughs> emphasize the cartoon style of it. Whoops! See, this is the alt, alt tab thing. I alt, went alt out of it. And now we've broken it. So that's a good thing that we set it up like we did. All right. But yeah, this got an animation. It's kind of fun. Next, we'll go over customizing the visuals even more of our radio menu but uh, this one's kind of going on a little bit too long so thanks for watching see you in the next video